Hello YouTube, welcome to What The Math. Today I am taking a look at something absolutely incredible. This is actually a free to play um, game that has been developed. Okay, it's not a game actually, it's a, it's a simulator that has been developed um, for anyone to use for absolutely free. And I would like to present this as an excellent teaching tool because well, you'll see in a second. First of all, look at all these numbers on the left. This is basically telling you about this planet. It tells you everything about it. All kinds of um, uh, Earth sciences information, including how many moons it has, what temperature it has, what its periapsis and apoapsis are, and its orbiting parameters and so on and so forth. And I can actually zoom in here and um, go on the surface of the planet. And I can increase my speed by using my mouse wheel to um, go further and find um, other things on this planet like different biomes and different um, things to explore. Like the, I believe there's an ocean here somewhere that I saw from the from the orbit. And but uh, the most amazing thing about this free game is something that I'll show you in a second after I find this water that I'm looking for right now. And I've decided I'm just gonna fly through the atmosphere until I find the water. There you go. There's the water. There's a beach right here. Ooh, going a little bit too fast. Uh, Am I underwater? I'm totally underwater. All right, let's get out of here and let's see what this looks like. So look at that. Look at the effects of the water. This is quite amazing. For a free game, this is actually pretty incredible. But you just wait. This is not even everything. So yes, it has water and beaches. It has all kinds of atmosphere, uh, all kinds of um, biomes to explore, all kinds of information here. But here comes the most amazing part. Here comes the part that is going to blow your mind if you don't know what this game is like. As I zoom out of the atmosphere, as I fly out of the atmosphere, I can actually leave this planet and guess what? I can explore the rest of the universe. Yeah, that's right. Every single light that you see in front of you, every single light is actually an actual object. It's an actual object. So in a sense, this is like a universe simulator that you can use to teach your students about the universe, about the size of the universe, about various types of universes and galaxies, sorry, not universes, types, types of galaxies and solar uh, solar systems. Uh, you can see that it even has um, northern lights in here. So there's all kinds of very realistic effects that have been basically simulated in this um, in this game. I don't want to call it a game because it, does, it doesn't actually have a storyline or any kind of um, uh, characters or anything. It's essentially a universe simulator. So, but you know what, let's just uh, stop talking and try to explore. Let's go. Uh, let's go somewhere. Let's go toward. Um, I just saw a really interesting looking um, formation somewhere. It was a red formation that I saw. So, oh yeah, this is the Milky Way, and this is just one of the, just one of the um, galaxies that you can explore here. Essentially, this is a procedurally generated. Oh, there we go. This is where I want to go. But before that, let's actually go to our moon. But this is, yeah, this is all procedurally generated. It's a procedurally generated um, universe simulator that is surprisingly absolutely free. You can download it in the link below. Um, if your computer can handle this, totally use this to uh, use this in class. Try to um, encourage your students to use it because this is like the best that uh, our generation of our generation of computers has been able to bring to us because look at that. It's procedurally generates terrain, procedurally generates planets and solar systems and galaxies and universes. And one of the cool activities that you can do with your students is actually having taught them something about galaxies and solar systems and our, um, our galaxy in particular, you can have them try to find our solar system, our, our Earth. That's actually something that I've been um, trying to solve for quite a while now, just exploring some of these systems, because some of them are actually based on real systems that we, we have found already. And trying to find where, where or where is our Earth. And I was still not being successful actually. But the cool thing is that some of these planets do um, have Earth-like atmospheres and obviously life as well. It actually does tell you about life on the planets. So here it will actually tell you that it has organic motorcycle marine terrestrial life on that planet right there. This planet, however, um, is not here. I want to look at this. I want to look at this. How do I oh, take them too close? There we go. It's a um, cold, cool Selena class, and I believe it's just uh, just the moon. Now, you, you can see that this solar system actually has two stars. It's a binary system. It has a yellow dwarf and, and an orange dwarf. So let's just actually just go ahead and come close to them. And uh, it, the more amazing thing about this is that it's so detailed. It's so, so detailed. Um, you can actually, you can actually see here, there's all the kind of information given to you 
um, which makes it really awesome as a kind of a exploratory tool for students. Oh no, I think I've accidentally left the system. Okay, that is not exactly the right solar system I, um, I was going to explore, but anyway, let's just go closer to these two stars. I'm currently moving at a pretty high speed. Um, there you go. It's 116 times the speed of light. And I believe I've actually discovered... What is this? What is this place? What is this place? Let's come closer to it. So this is obviously a star. Yeah, that's a star. And it has... What is that? Oh, it has asteroids flying around it. That's so cool. Let's go check out those asteroids. As you come closer, it will start procedurally generating the terrain on it. And you can then see what it's like. Okay. A little closer. A little closer. A little closer. And look at that. It's coming into view right now. And it's actually moving. It's actually orbiting around this that star. So you can come to it. And close to it, you can see some of its terrain. And look at the beautiful view that we have. This is pretty amazing. Anyway, so what I really wanted to see is, where is that red formation that I kept talking about? I want to go and see what it is. We're actually going to fly through this um, beautiful uh, galaxy and try to find, there we go, this is what I wanted. We're going to try to, oh, this, okay, this is a horse nebula. This is actually a real nebula, but it's, it's viewed from a different angle, so it doesn't look exactly like that um, from our planet. But I'm going to fly really, really fast toward it at speeds of, uh, okay, this is, this is not speed of light yet. This is going to be, okay, this is just over speed of light. This is uh, one parsec, and there we go. This is, those of you who've watched Star Trek, this is going to be familiar to you. We're steaming through the galaxy. We're like, literally flying through this at crazy, crazy speeds. All right, so this is, this is Horse Nebula. This is a pretty cool way of looking at it. I don't actually know um, exactly how it looks like from our, uh, from our planet, but it kind of looks like, oh yeah, it looks kind of like this. So this is one of the ways of finding Earth, actually, is by finding... Uh, an object that you're familiar with and then trying to fly back and trying to basically discover uh, what it looks like on Earth and then essentially trying to um, track your way back into into our planet, our home planet. So there is a blue, I just saw a blue giant somewhere. Blue super giant. So let's actually come closer to it. Let's see what this blue super giant is like. This is a blue super giant that we can see from our planet as well when we look at the horse nebula and we're going to take a look at it so we have some found some of its parameters already we have its diameter we have its um its magnitude and we also have its temperature and luminosity so this is oh my god it's so bright so bright but so beautiful uh, so these are some of the cool um tools that you can explore with your students if you're teaching them either physics or earth sciences and then you can go ahead and try to have them explore and fly into this super bright planet. This is really, really bright. It's actually hurting my eyes right now. I saw it for a second. I'm going to go a little bit slower so that I can actually approach it. But look at how bright this is. And you can actually even talk about why, why it's so bright and um, why it's so hot compared to our sun. There you go. Look at this beauty. So we, we can actually go ahead and try to land on its surface and see what it's like on the surface of this super blue giant, which is really no other game can actually even uh, uh, offer you because I don't think there's any other game in the world that even has this ability of landing on a super blue giant. Okay, I can't even actually land on it, I think. I think, I think I'm stuck. Oh no, I'm stuck, help me. Help me, I'm stuck. No, no, no. I'm stuck because there's a gravity here that's pulling me toward it. Alright, so this is what its surface looks like. It's not particularly exciting, I think. But you know what? Let's just get out of here. This is this is not as cool as I thought it would be. Let's uh, let's do something even cooler. Let's fly away from this. Try not to blind ourselves by looking at this super bright, super blue giant. And we're gonna fly out of our galaxy at super high speeds, and you'll see what happens then. So we're flying at. Ooh. Okay. My, my computer is having trouble um, handling this, but we're flying at speeds of 250 parsecs, which is about, uh, what is it, almost a thousand times speed of light. I'm going to fly out of our galaxy. And look at that. And this is our galaxy. We can actually leave our galaxy. 
and we can start exploring other galaxies. And this is just incredible. The person who has made it's actually made by one person. The person who has made this put some crazy efforts, crazy hours into making this game. And this is absolutely incredible. And the thing is, it's this game is only surviving on on donations, uh, specifically donations from people that are you know willing to donate. So if you are willing to donate into this project, definitely do it because it's still in beta. It's not actually final version yet, but even the final version will be free. And it's meant for education, really, for people to explore uh, the galaxy the universe to learn more about the universe and right now i'm moving at the maximum speed of 100 megaparsecs per second which is 400 million times of speed of light and we're going to be going away from our universe distance says it says right here we're going to try to reach the uh the edge of the universe and see what it looks like and just for fun we're going to try to land on one of our quasars one of the most farthest objects that are available to us and then see if we can procedurally generate one of them and see what it looks like right now we're at three point okay four uh, billion light years away we know that the gal a universe um, is actually 13 point like five ish um, billion years old so it's the maximum we can see is about three point thirteen point five billion light years away and so when this reaches 13.5 billion, I'm kind of curious what we'll see. But all these little dots that you see moving away from us, those are all galaxies as well. So you can imagine how many galaxies, how many possibilities there are, how many various planets there are. And this is something to explore as well, because a lot of students don't realize how huge, how magnificently huge and beautiful our universe is. Um, okay, I'm kind of lost. I don't really know where I'm going anywhere. Okay, I think I'm still, still moving away. I think I'm still moving away. Am I still moving away? Yeah, this tells me that I'm moving away. I'm gonna try to reach the maximum possible distance, but I really don't see nothing anymore. I see nothing. I don't see anything. It's so dark here. All right, that's not good. Um, that's because um, this game does have a very realistic kind of a, a universe formation because. We don't really know what's going on on the edge of the universe because we can kind of see blurs and detect some things, but it's not really, not really very precise. Anyway, I think I made a mistake. This isn't gigaparsecs. The reason why it's dark is because we don't actually see that far. This has to be approximately four gigaparsecs for me to actually see anything, maybe five gigaparsecs. So I think I went a little bit too far and this is really past the edge of the universe. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find the first object that I see and then try to approach it and land on it. Oh, and the music in this game is absolutely incredible too because I mean, this person, not only did he make a game, or not game, but the simulation, but he also created the music for it, which is ridiculous. This is, this is incredible. This person is a genius. Okay, so here we go. This is about six just over six gigaparsecs away from our um, from our galaxy and let's just let's just look at something what is this SA I'm not sure what SA stands for E0 I'm not I, I don't really know what these um, designations are because I'm not an earth science teacher but I should I'm, I'm gonna take a guess that these are different types of galaxies far farther away from where we can actually detect anything but I kind of like this red one let's go to this red one Let's approach this red galaxy right here and find a random planet to land on. Okay, I'm a little bit closer than I thought it would be. Okay, here we go. Let's increase our speed. And look at that, it's coming to view and starting to form. Procedure will generate various planets. And this is just another galaxy somewhere out there. And there's just no way for me to even find my way back home, so I might as well just settle here. This is my new home. I'm gonna call it What the Mathia. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick a star. Actually, you know what? Let's go toward the center of this galaxy. Oh, it's so bright. It's very, very bright. Okay, let's go toward the center. And you see this is generating all these stars. I'm gonna pick a planet, or a, sorry, a solar system. White main sequence star. Okay, that sounds cool. That sounds pretty cool. Let's go toward that. Oh, no, too fast. Increase our speed. Let's go toward the star, Star Trek style, where no man has ever been before, and 
I shall claim this for for history and for Mathematica. This is my new home. Okay, I just missed my new home. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So this is this is a white main sequence star, and this is obviously procedure generated. So these are not randomly generated, but generated based on specific parameters that this game has uh, in it. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I know it works because every time you try to start this game, um, you will have these randomly generated galaxies. And some of them are actually based on reality. I mean, uh, if you go to Andromeda Galaxy, it will be um, it will be very, very realistic. It will be exactly like we know it, exactly like we see it. Okay, so this is a binary system, and here we have two stars. We have this star and this other star. And oh yeah, there's also this bar here that allows you to control various parameters, but it's not really essential. Um, I think there's no planets around this system though. So I don't think I actually have a home here to claim as my own, but whatever. Oh, maybe it's this one. Hold on. Let me come to this. Let me come closer to this star. I'm gonna come closer to this star. Oh, I have something right here. What is that? It's a planet. It's a planet. I think it's a planet. No, it's not a planet. It's a cold gas giant. No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a planet. I want a planet. Is that a planet? Main sequence star. Warm ice giant. Warm ice giant. What is that? Is that even a thing? I guess so. Okay, so let's come closer and see what else is here. What is that? What is this right here? Warm desert. Ooh, I want that. This is my new home. I'm gonna live in this warm desert world. Okay, so let's land on it. Try to land on it because we're going a little bit too fast. Oh, oh. A little bit too fast. A little bit slower. Oh, there we go, there we go. This is my new home. It's Duna. Almost. It's almost like Duna. From, uh, or Dune, sorry. Dune from the Dune, from the book. And it even has three satellites around it, I think. Isn't that a satellite? Yeah. There's a satellite right here. I think there's a satellite right here. This is another satellite, isn't it? Asteroid. It has an asteroid orbiting around it, and then it has... Another asteroid. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna see if I can accelerate time and take a look at what this will be like. So you can see it, or look, they start orbiting around it. It has a lot of objects flying around it, and it's flying away from me. So I'm gonna go and catch up with it. I'm gonna go on its land on the surface and explore the surface. So let's land on it. Oh, this looks so beautiful. Look at this. Look at this beautiful planet. It's a warm desert. Warm desert planet. I'm gonna land on it and see what it's like. So the atmosphere and the surface is being generated currently, so you'll see it appear as I try to land on it. And, oh my god, this is beautiful. Look at that. And the music changed as well. So this game is, or I keep going again, this simulation is absolutely incredible. I really cannot stress enough how, how amazing this is for our students to explore, to, to basically visualize all this beautiful, amazing stuff that our universe is and this will let them you know get into the in, uh, basically it, this will interest them in exploring universe and, and possibly even pursuing career in in um uh, earth sciences or even um astronomy and who knows maybe one of them will even become an astronaut but this is my new home i'm gonna claim it as my own this is mathenia and it's a desert warm desert world that has uh, greenhouse effect of 116 Kelvin, temperature of 385 Kelvin. So essentially it's just, a, uh, I think it's like over 100 degrees Celsius. So it's a little bit warm here, possibly too warm, no water, no, no any kind of water here. But it's beautiful and it's red and it's all mine. And it even has this black deposit of stuff, look at that. Let's, let's take a look at this. Let's see what this actually is. Oh, it's so beautiful, it's so pretty. Some sort of volcanic formation. Anyway, so I'm going to pause this here, standing on top of this mountain. And this game is called Space Engine. The link for this game is available in the description below. Definitely support this game if you if you have money to donate, do it. Because this is the most incredible tool for space and universe exploration ever. Thank you for watching and please subscribe. This has been What the Math with Space Engine. Flying away into the abyss of the universe. Bye bye guys.